after the 2007 general election in this country, six Kenyans found themselves at the ICC, the famous Ocampo Six. From Mwekibaki or the PNU side, there were three people. There was Uru Kenyatta, there was Francis Mudaura, who was the head of the public service then, and then there was Hussein Ali, the commissioner of police. And then from the ODM side, or Railo Dinga side, there were also three individuals. There was William Ruto, who was a Pentagon member, there was Henry Kosgei, who was ODM chairperson, and then there was Joshua Arapsan, a journalist. The ICC refused to confirm three cases, so they were dropped. The case of Hussein Ali, the case of Francis Mudaura, and the case of Henry Kosgei. But three cases proceeded to the full trial. The case of William Ruto, the case of Joshua Rapsang, and the case of President Uru Kenyatta. He was not a president by that time. So they proceeded to the full trial. In fact, these guys were accused of several charges. Murder, deportation, forceful transfer of population, persecution, and several other charges. So it, they proceeded to the full trial. And because these guys were understanding how those, those charges, charges against crimes against humanity, was so heavy on them, they decided to join hands and fight the charges together. Because if Uhuru was accused of uh, mobilizing youth to retaliate to those who attacked them, and Ruto was uh, accused of organizing people to attack Ruto, then it means these guys just decided to come together. In fact, I've always opined on this platform that there is nothing ideologically that binds Ruto and Uhuru. And that's why I'm not surprised of the betrayals between the two guys. So they joined hands and later on became the president and the duty president of the Republic of Kenya while still facing those charges at ICC. And once they became the president and the duty president, they managed to clear their names. So ICC closed the case for Uhuru Muge Kenyatta, so which means it cannot be revived. But the case of William Ruto and Joshua Arap Sang were not closed. They were vacated. Which means anybody with any new evidence can actually revive those cases. That's the honest truth. And this is where William Ruto and his allies are worried. So in 2015, after the cases were, were, were closed and terminated and all vacated, ICC issued warrant of arrest to two Kenyans. There was Philip Bett and then there was Paul Gishiru. Paul Gisheru represented the witnesses as their lawyer. <laughs> so it was the lawyer for the witnesses. So ICC then decided to issue warrant of arrest to these guys. And Fatuma Ben Suda, Fatou Ben Suda, actually described Paul Gisheru as the grandmaster of a well oiled syndicate, which bribed witnesses who were to testify against William Ruto and Joshua Arapsan. Remember, the cases of Sang and the cases of Ruto were vacated because there were no witnesses. Those witnesses, majority of them, ended up recanting their cases. Those who refused disappeared. Up to now, they cannot be found. So Paul Gisheru being their lawyer, the ICC found out was the guy who was used to, to bribe these witnesses. He was used to make some of them disappear. <laughs> so last year, November, the shock came in for William Ruto and his allies. Paul Gisheru surrendered himself to the ICC. I did a very comprehensive video on that. And in that video, I explained theoretically that for me, Paul Gisheru decided to present himself at the ICC because of three reasons. Number one, probably the ICC burden was too heavy for him to continue carrying. Ruto had cleared his name, Sang had cleared his name, Uhuru had cleared his name. So he was still carrying that burden. If there are witnesses who disappeared, he was still carrying that burden because the ICC said, so probably he just wanted to clear his name. And I also opined that probably someone also was trying to use Paul Gisheru to revive the ICC narrative for 2020 general election. 
because by that time someone like Oscar Sudi had started talking about ICC cases being revived oh mara police wanatumiwa ku OG you know former people who worked i mean former police officers from Eldoret were being summoned to Nairobi and we all remember when the drama where several uh, cases of uh, a group of people taken to ICC to the DCI to re, to to write statements i also talked of the third thing probably it was a strategy to tame Ruto. You just tell him, you know, boss, you are not no longer that powerful in government. We can revive these cases. But the, the, the move by ICC, I mean, the move by Paul Gisheru to surrender himself at the ICC is really worrying William Samay Rutos and his team. So he, he presented himself there. And this guy, the ICC, is accusing him of six things. Number one, he's accused of trying to bribe witness number 397 with 1 million and 5 million Kenya shillings. So if this this uh, this uh, witness is still there, <laughs> then he will definitely have the the evidence. ICC, I'm sure they have access to all the transactions of this guy. He's also accused of trying to bribe witness number P516 with 500,000. You know, some of these witnesses testified uh, were to testify against Ruto and because of these interferences then they refused then number three is also accused of target of uh, trying to persuade witness number p6 p13 to withdraw as a prosecution witness so number four is also accused of trying to persuade witness p800 by offering a bribe of 2.5 million and 1.5 million to influence prosecution witness to withdraw so basically some of these guys were were asked to withdraw some of them recant some of them who refused disappeared number five he was also accused of trying to induce witness number 495 to withdraw as prosecution witness number six he's also accused of trying to bribe witness p 536 with 1 million to 1.4 million to withdraw as prosecution witness so he presented himself before the icc and this icc ghost has refused to leave this country that's the honest reality. It's still haunting William Ruto. It's still haunting Joshua Arapsang. In fact, there was a time Joshua Arapsang, for the first time, narrated how his mind just stopped functioning. How that burden of ICC was so heavy on him. On him. So this guy, James Gishero, I mean Paul Gishero, was released so yesterday something very interesting happened and it's really worrying to william ruto and his allies paul gisheru entered into a deal with icc over their witnesses case remember he was detained there so icc entered into a deal with him so that he can be allowed back into the country i'll be referring to an article here so it's saying paul kenyan lawyer paul gisheru has been freed after striking a cooperation deal with the icc following his voluntary surrender in 2020. so he surrendered so these guys have decided okay let's cooperate according to the, the documents from the hague based court gisheru who was accused of interfering with witnesses in the deputy president william rutos and joshua arab sang cases is now free to return to the country. The International Criminal Court, however, issued conditions for the lawyer's release. You see, we are talking of witnesses disappearing. This guy has a lot on these witnesses. He's the one who was used to bribe them. He was the one he knew all the witnesses. ICC is just has just blinded the, the witnesses. You can't know ni nani ni nani ni nani. Paul Gisheru had access to all these ICC witnesses because initially he pretended to be representing them. Then he was penetrated. Then they started giving him money because Paul Gisheru. What interest do you think Paul Gisheru had with these cases? To an extent that he can offer a bribe. You are a lawyer. You are supposed to be paid. But you are telling the witness to withdraw the case and you are offering a bribe of up to 5 million. So it means someone with the deep pocket was fully behind him. 
And those who refused were eliminated. They are nowhere. Even if they were not eliminated, they can't be traced up to now. So this guy has been released. He's coming to Kenya. He now has his freedom. Is he going to survive outside here? And that's where the problem is. And this is the biggest worry. Someone might maliciously decide to eliminate this guy. The moment he comes into the country. And the moment he will be eliminated, eliminated who will carry that burden? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. And if he's going to come into the country, is he going now to start exposing other witnesses? Or is he going to be used? Let me just read for you some of the conditions which he will comply with. The first condition is that Gishero will be required to deposit 1 million to the ICC registrar in the form of cash or bank order. 1 million to him, that small amount of money, he will easily do that. Then Gishero will be will also have to comply with all orders issued in this case and surrender himself immediately to the relevant authorities if it's required by the chamber. So it means if ICC will say today that come back, there's uh, something here we want to ask you, then we'll have to do that immediately. So those are very tough conditions. Then he's also been warned against hampering or jeopardizing the prosecution or legal proceeding and not to participate expressively expressly or indirectly in any conduct which is forbidden by Article 70 of the statute. So basically, he should not interfere with the case. So Gishiro Akirudi Kenya, Akena family yake, I'm not sure whether he's supposed to, to practice law with this case, but if he's supposed to practice law, that's what he should do, but not with these particular cases. So Gishiro will also not be allowed to change residential location from what he provided to the courts. So if this guy said that his home is in uh, Nyakach, for example, then he should not change. He should not relocate. Even if he was, his new house was almost complete, but he's staying in uh, Madare, then he wanted to move to Rwanda, <clears throat> he will have to stay there. I don't know how for how long. <laughs> so he will not. <clears throat> then he must also submit copies of <clears throat> He submitted copies of his passport, visas, identity documents, and other travel documents. So basically, he submitted all those copies so that these guys will now be trailing him. You know, these guys, anytime you travel to another country, your documents are killed in. So probably they've given the Interpol. Anytime he moves outside there, he will be flagged. <laughs> so his freedom has been curtailed. One of the other conditions, travel conditions, is that Gishero will only be allowed to visit two country, countries abroad. The Netherlands and a second country that was recanted. So he can only visit those two countries. In Guinea, I'm a feature. So probably there is uh, some, some witnesses who are going to country in Guinea. <laughs> so those are the only countries where he's going to be allowed to travel to. Because in Fanywa, a talker upper I ended in one of the countries, then another witness I ended, another I ended the other country, then they meet in those countries. If you want to meet these people, you go to this country where these witnesses are. So that the cameras will just be on you. <laughs> <coughs> Again, he's saying the travel to the two countries will have to be cleared by ICC seven days in advance after disclosing the details of the trip where he will reside and the contact address. <laughs> yeah, just like I was expecting. So if he has to go there, ICC must clear him seven days. And I'm going to, to this residence. So that the witnesses who are in that country will not be allowed to meet him. <laughs> it's, hey, freedom is a good thing. This guy doesn't now enjoy the freedom which he should be enjoying. In order to travel to a country not on the approved list, the decisions required Gishero to give the court 14-day notice. So, okay, I want to go to Uganda. <laughs> then you must give 14-day notice. And such a request, the decision states, can only be guaranteed if there is 
good cause shona so you can't just wake up wake up one morning as we ni gisheru unataka kupeleka familia hapa Uganda kutembea ama Arusha <laughs> okay and lastly you will also be required to report once a week to the ICC register including through the use of video conferencing facilities so every single week these guys will be logging in and then you will be calling ICC hello there this is James Gisheru i surrendered myself there from Kenya on the Kenyan case yeah, i just wanted to confirm that i'm still alive <laughs> Let us wait and see how this case is going to unfold. But the honest truth is that this case is haunting William Samoyeruto and his allies. Bye bye.